Hello everyone, welcome to your very first morning coffee session of 2020. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. It's very, very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, welcome back guys. Welcome to 2020. This is your daily energy reading for Thursday, January 2nd of 2020. Yes, now, please keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because we are, well, this reading is dated for the, 20, the, the, the 2nd of January, it doesn't mean it absolutely has to resonate at that time, okay? This can resonate for you at any time in your life. Um, oh, so the uh, January readings are up. If you haven't had a chance to check those out yet, Go right ahead please do so um the messages actually were really great this month um we're all moving into a really important pivotal time spirit is even saying very piv pivotal time in all of our awakening processes um just one note about that i, I ran into a little bit of a, a snafu something that i wasn't really expecting or prepared for when it came to editing those videos so they're kind of rough. Um, they don't have the, you know, the usual transitions that I like to, to use in the in the readings. But um, sorry about that. It's just it, I, I have a brand new system and I ran into an unexpected roadblock that I didn't have time to fix or handle or figure out in order to keep my keep up my schedule of having the readings out on the 1st of January. So moving forward for like February and beyond, um, it's going to be better. So I just, <laughs> my Virgo rising is showing because <laughs> it's not perfect. And I kind of wanted it to be perfect. But being a Virgo rising, part of my lesson here in life is to become okay with the fact that things are going to be less than perfect at any given time. That's something I recently learned about. Um, and it is quite pertinent. Yes. But anyway, so I just wanted to point that out. If any of you were wondering, that's the case with that. Um, also, I do want to mention that we are coming up on the one year anniversary of Morning Coffee. It is January 8th, which is going to be next Wednesday. And if my schedule permits it, I actually think I want to do happy hour on that day. So it could be like a, a, a um, what is it? A combo, a combo of happy hour and a birthday party for Divine Conversations. And I still have some packages here. I have like four packages right now that I received from you guys that I haven't opened yet because I want to do it in a live session. So I think I'm going to do it then. Um, so it's going to be like a little birthday party, happy hour session, plus a little bit of an opening and unboxing for some of the cool stuff that you guys have sent me. I will be checking in at the PO, I would be checking the PO box throughout the week um, in case anything else comes through. If you guys would like to send something for the birthday, the anniversary, um, I, I, that would be great. You know, the, the PO box address is in the description box below. Yeah. Um, okay. I guess that's it. Let's get into the, re the, to the energies for today. So as I was connecting to the collective, at first I did see yellow, which was, which is fine, which is great. That's been... You know, that's been the deal lately. Um, but then as I started shuffling the cards, I actually, I was shifted into green, which was the green, the heart chakra. So, okay. So we went, we entered a little bit into the heart space and I was asking, all right, spirit. So since we're, since you're taking me to the heart space here, what is going on in the heart space of the collective? Um, the first thing that came out is the Hierophant in reverse. Now, this side of the Hierophant, in my opinion, you know, as a reader, this side of the Hierophant actually is much better. To me, it it speaks to um, awakening in a sense, um, going behind the veil, seeing the truth in the, behind the matter. Certain, you know what? Actually, um, I think I do want to do it. I have to go into my closet for that. I want to get. I think I want to read this side of the card because and i'll explain to you why and it has to do with this the fool here too because the first two cards that came out for the for the collective energy was the fool and the hierophant but when the fool came out it came out like this right you see how it's kind of like sideways here the hierophant was definitely in reverse and when i was channeling i was reading into it i was hearing this is reversed but this is upright the fool here is upright even though what i was kind of getting with the hierophant is that um 
it, it, the fool being in reverse would make sense. Bear with me, guys. I have to go into my closet to get the book for this because I want to read. Anyway, um, oh no, it's not in my closet. No, it's buried on my bed. <laughs> Hold on. Um, so uh, there it is. There it is. There it is. No, that's not it. Where is it? Oh my God, where is it? I really want to. I really want to read this, you guys, because I want to understand. And I'm not going to be able to find it now. My room is a mess. Okay. Oh, there it is. I found it. Ha 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 Okay. <laughs> so, all right. Here, check it out, guys. What I was getting with the Hierophant in reverse and the Fool in reverse, there is some sort of leap of, fa leap of faith that someone is looking or wishing to take. The Hierophant can represent marriage or some sort of commitment. Um, and with the Fool in reverse here, it would make sense that this would be like, there would be a pause on this for right now. I kind of was feeling an energy of this is coming. Um, like this is on the horizon. There's some sort of leap of faith that wants to be taken. There's some sort of, I'm hearing truth, honesty, or clarity that wants to be conveyed, that wants to be expressed. Um, there's some, and if it's not just a marriage, there could be some commitment or something. Uh, this could be a business partnership. This could be romantic. Um, but then spirit was saying that actually the fool is upright so it's like someone is looking someone is looking to take some sort of leap of faith and then with the hierophant in reverse here it could mean that yes yeah, someone's going to take a leap of faith or someone is planning or looking to take a leap of faith with intentions of making some sort of commitment in the future so like the current energy i guess would be the fool here in deciding to take a leap of faith deciding to take that jump with intentions of making some sort of commitment later with the hierophant in reverse like that's on the back burner that's in the background that would be the ultimate goal in terms of taking this leap of faith before i go any further i want to read what this side of the hierophant represents here this is that side. Carved on the back of the throne is the tetra is is the tetragrammaton. Tetragrammaton pentagram. An esoteric design that come on. Why aren't you focusing? Anyway, a, 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 a uh, an esoteric design that combines the hidden name of God with symbols for man and the microcosm. Some interpret this as uh, the word made flesh or the divinity the divinity inherent in man the base of the throne is unfinished just as mortals are unfinished and always striving toward refinement sitting, sitting besides the base are uh, the, the paleolithic goddess figure a cloven apple and a baby holding a key when you get this side in a reading the rigidity of the other side of the card has given way to freedom of thought and possibility you've gone beyond merely questioning the, per the perceptions of religion now you are ready to challenge them or rebel against them if this isn't a situation where religious teachings are relevant think of another situation in which you are being held back by thou shalt quote unquote and reconsider your actions okay this is actually this is making ex this is really making sense now um especially when we get into this side of the equation but so this is as i thought this side of the card does represent you know getting past the indoctrination getting past the rigidity as the book said getting into a little bit of a rebellious nature spirit keeps saying to me that the fool here remains needs to remain upright because that's really the intention here although i kind of feel like there is still an energy of um maybe some sort of resistance maybe some sort of blockage and that blockage could come from this three of swords energy that's in the overall okay but then you also on the other side of that you do have the two of wands again leap of faith moving in a new direction however the blockage here could be there is some sort of pain some sort of heartbreak associated with this whether you're looking to reconnect with someone or whether you're looking to take a leap of faith oh, well i'm sorry whether you're looking to reconnect with someone in which circumstances between the two of you generated this three of swords energy or it could be that you're looking to make some sort of decision, make some sort of change in your life, rebel in some way, go against the status quo, maybe even just go against what may have always been 
for you and if you're not necessarily just you know rebelling against all of society we'll say we'll but, but take that term light, lightly okay but whether you're not even, even if you're not rebelling against like some major societal structure or something even if it could just be like something is changing in your life that is completely f out of range of what is normal for your life um, like breaking the mold in that sense if you're doing that there could be some sort of heartbreak associated when it comes to the people around you or what it is you're changing in your life okay that could be a hindrance that could be a blockage right now it really doesn't feel like it's going to be too much of a blockage and that's okay and spirit is saying now that is why we're asking you or we're telling you that you need to keep the fool upright because someone you're going to for whomever this for this is for you're going to take this leap of faith eventually once the timing is correct Right now, you could be, with this Two of Wands energy, you could be trying to decide the best way to go about this right now to maybe minimize as much damage as possible, all right? So then we get into this side, 11-11. Then we get into this side of the situation. You have the Ace of Wands with the Nine of Pentacles and the Devil, but it's the backside of the Devil, okay? Which is awesome because in this sense, it means that you're basically breaking free from some sort of chains from some sort of conformity also okay so there you go all right so this is what spirit is saying this is you standing in your own independence having a strong idea of what you want or being inspired towards moving in some sort of new direction okay i really do feel like this really does feel like You've chosen the direction you want to go in. You've chosen the leap of faith that you want to take here with the fool. You're standing in your own, your own sense of independence and autonomy. And it's kind of like you're looking the devil right in the face saying, you have no power here, which is then causing him to turn away because he knows you're right. Because you are taking your, you've, you've taken your power back. You are taking your power back. Although I feel like for the most part, you ha actually have taken your power back with this nine of pentacles energy here. You've reached some level of sovereignty. Okay. And I'm, what I'm hearing is nobody else has control over your power or your will, your willpower or your drive any longer. You hold that power now. Okay. So with that said, then this two of wands definitely does feel like you being in a planning phase right now, trying to decide the best way forward in, to the, to, in terms of taking this action that you're inspired towards. Also, Spirit says, taking this leap of faith. Okay. Excellent. Mm. It's funny. I wanted to just say, I wanted to just say, excellent, Virgo as if i was speaking to a virgo but then i looked at the cards and i was like oh well wait a second actually this nine of pentacles energy is very virgo energy. this is a this is a virgo card okay you could also be dealing with a capricorn here with the devil um oh and you could have taurus here with the hierophant okay so um yeah keep that in mind the fool i don't know what the fool is the fool i believe i want to not know well, I want to say Aquarius, but you do have the this, this shooting star here on that card. The star in the the tarot is Aquarius. Um, I don't know. I think the fool is a number of different signs. Anyway, it doesn't even matter. The signs really are not possible. Are, are not that important. <laughs> this is a general reading, guys. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna give this one more shuffle, and then we'll see what else we have for the day. Yeah. Okie dokie. Here we go, kids. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Okay, well, look, we have the Three of Swords again on the top of the deck, and then we have the King of Wands. So this could be a masculine energy, um, or this could be, you know, coming from a place of your own inner masculine energy, wanting to take some sort of leap of faith, yes, wanting to move in some sort of new direction. With this side of the King of Wands, though, we have this king is talking to the big old snake that during the day is his salamander companion but at night he becomes this big old, big old snake in which that symbolizes wisdom it represents wisdom um and what this kind of says in this deck it's just like this king of wands is sitting here talking to conversing with his companion the snake who is a very wise um 
creature, a very wise being, and kind of like discussing how they're going to break free, break free from the mold in some way. It's very much similar to the Hierophant, the backside of the, or the, the other side of the Hierophant, yeah? Um, but this Three of Swords here, what I'm getting, I'm getting, there's like a, there's a conversation. I feel like there's an inner dialogue that's happening that's saying, okay, how do we do this while circumventing any sort of Three of Swords energy, while, while getting past any sort of heartbreak? Like, how do we get past this energy here, this Three of Swords? I'm hearing things like, how do we make this right again? And I feel like this is a really serious conversation that you're having, some sort of internal dialogue that you're having, maybe with your higher self, or maybe even the universe, okay? This is a very good conversation to have. Um, it does feel like it's coming from a very mature place, I'm not gonna lie. It's like, it's like no, in all seriousness though, how do we do this? How do we make this right? How do we make this happen? Excellent. All right, kids, now we'll get into the rest of it, yeah? Okay. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Thursday, January 2nd, 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, I I'm going to give this five shuffles. Spirit is saying five shuffles, so that's what we're going to do. So, one. Now, what I am seeing here is purple now combined with that green color of the heart chakra. One. So, what this is saying to me is there is a sense of higher wisdom that's coming in here, helping you to help you make your decision and how to move forward with this plan of action that you have. Um... There's also an energy of um, communicating with the universe, communicating with spirit, um, making your desires known to spirit, um, kind of setting the course for how you want the universe to help you work something out, okay? Um, it's like setting your intentions, letting the universe know what it is that you desire, and then just like kind of putting that out there and letting the universe kind of set that into motion. This is three. Okay. And this is all in, in tandem. This is all working in tandem with what's going on in your heart chakra. So, ooh, four. Yeah. So for, so what I'm feeling, what I'm picking up with this is those of us that have really been working on our heart chakras, that have really been working on ourselves, that have really been, been opening up to what's been going on within, clearing your heart chakra, healing any sort of pain and trauma in your heart chakra that you know may you may have been harboring, especially things from early childhood, really listening to your heart, um, following your heart's guidance, really trying to be on your path, really trying to do what the, what's authentic for you, really working on yourself in this way, What's happening now is this communication that's happening between you and the higher and your higher self or the universe or whatnot, whatever, it is being influenced by what is going on within your heart chakra now that your heart chakra is way more open and is flourishing that much more, okay? And this is five. Okay. This is good, guys. This is really good. I've been watching someone, her name is on YouTube. Um, she's She goes by the name of Star Girl, the Practical Witch. She's really great. I actually really like her. Um, and I've been watching her lately and she did some 2020 predictions that I was watching yesterday. Um, and we're moving into Aquarius season in the end of January, which is kind of, which she was saying is like the season of um, karmic, pay out so either you could be dealing with some negative karma or you could be receiving some benefits in your karma some like really good karmic payback and what i and the reason why i'm mentioning is that mentioning that is because i just spirit was just reminding me that as we move into this aquarius season there's going to be a lot of karmic payback um, and a lot of good karma is going to be paid out to those of us that have been really working on ourselves 
internally we're doing our internal work healing cleansing purging and doing the things that are really most authentic to us things that really are that we're really passionate about or things that um really feed our souls or things that are that have like a higher purpose and all that stuff there is definitely some karmic retribution that is going to come through come forward um once we get into aquarius season and what I, what I feel like is happening right now is there is a sense of communication with the universe in how some of that is played out, okay? So between the heart chakra and the crown chakra or the purple energy that I'm seeing, there's communication that's setting what your heart's desires in motion, okay? And so right now with that two of wands energy that was in the pre-shuffle there, there is a process of trying to figure out how to move forward, what actions to take, whatnot, whatever, okay? Excellent. All right. All right, all right. Enough rambling. What, let's get into the rest of the reading for today. Thursday, January 2nd. What else do we want to talk about in this heart space spirit? Thursday, January 2nd. I just saw I just saw purple energy with red energy. And with that, I heard making it real. Okay, so there is an energy of taking some sort of spiritual reality, some sort of desire. That I, I, my eyes are closed, so I don't see what's going on on the table right now. And I'm going to do another pull, but bear with me for a second. There is an energy of taking some sort of reality that is in the spiritual realms right now and grounding it into the physical. That's what I'm seeing between this purple and this red energy now, okay? And the red being the root chakra, that is the physicality of your being that is your your beingness your physical beingness here in the three-dimensional plane right so with so this is very much between the purple and the red which is actually one of my favorite color combinations actually purple and red i just love that but but um as i'm getting a very much an as above so below energy from that okay so there's something there's a heart's desire here that you're communicating with spirit about and spirit is in the process right now of helping you flesh out a way to make that real make that bring that manifestation to fruition okay and this could be a process that lasts over the year 2020 but don't get caught up on the time period all right but okay okay spirit is saying is telling me to say that because year 2020 is is what this is all about like this is going to be a common theme for the year 2020 okay that doesn't mean that certain manifestations are are going to take the whole year it's just saying that is kind of like the energetic focus the energetic flow the current flow of the energy within the year 2020 okay excellent let's get some more on this table here one more pull and we'll see thursday january 2nd Thursday, January 2nd. I'm going to do one more. One more here. Thursday, January 2nd. Please, Spirit. What else would you like to discuss with us? Thursday, January 2nd. Thursday, Thursday. That's enough or one more? One more. All right, fine. One more. We're going to do one more. Ooh, okay. One more. Thursday, January 2nd. Anything else? That one, okay. Not, not this one. Not that one, please. I hope. <laughs> not that one, please. Yes, because it was the Two of Swords. Okay. Overall energy, we do have the Ten of Wands, but on the other side, we have the Ace of Pentacles. So they're definitely. Oh, look at that. There definitely is. You, someone's feeling burdened here. Someone's feeling burdened here maybe even feeling overwhelmed um there is some sort there's something that you're looking to get off the ground okay ace of pentacles this could be a commitment um for a relationship a commitment towards marriage like what we were saying i did i did just hear that but also the hierophant came out before so and the hierophant can represent marriage um this is this doesn't have to just be relationship or romantic guys this can very well be um a business partnership, uh, a new project, starting your own business, reshaping a business, some sort of new start to a business potentially, but it also could be a relationship. But in terms of getting all of that off the ground, there's a lot. There probably is a lot to handle. There's probably a lot to plan. There's probably a lot to think about, okay? 
it might be overwhelming. I'm not, I'm, I'm not getting that it's, I'm not getting that it's anything bad. I really am not. Okay. You have the emperor here. So the masculine energy is showing back up, whether this is the masculine within you, or this is a masculine counterpart, or maybe this is a, for some of you, if this is business, I do kind of feel like this emperor energy might be an investor or a boss or someone that is of higher status, uh, more established than you, that you're than you that you're looking to potentially collaborate with, maybe get on your team, um, maybe like I said, as maybe this could be an investor, maybe get an investment from. Okay, now this is the backside of the emperor, um, and I, I don't. I'm, I'll look into the book just to see what all these symbols are, but I'm kind of getting the feeling that these symbols are just representing all of the tools that you have at your disposal to make everything that you want to create happen, make everything that you want to do happen. I mean, I don't, I, I don't really want to read from the book because we're already 25 minutes into this and I, I want to keep going. Um, but that's kind of just regardless of what these symbols actually mean spiritually what i'm picking up here is this is just reassurance that you've got everything that you need okay you do have the ace of cups here with the two of pentacles the two of pentacles came out crossing the ace of cups so we could really be talking about love marriage commitment relationships whatnot whatever um and it is the a side of the ace of cups where it is daylight okay it's not the it's not the nighttime scene it's the daytime scene so if we are talking about love or or, or marriage or something like that either two people know how they feel about each other and they've expressed that to each other or, or <laughs> confirmation right there did you hear that honk or it could be that someone is just aware of their feelings for another person and is kind of getting ready to say something or is kind of getting ready to make a move. Now, with this two of pentacles that is crossing the ace of cups, okay, it came out like this. And you see, it's this side of the card where it's that, that damn dog and pony show where you're kind of just keeping up appearance for those around you. There is a period right now of maybe keeping up some sort of appearance here. But again, that is only because somebody is in the planning phase. Here's that two of wands again. Now, when it first came out, it was, look, we were looking at the, the, the backside of the card, right? So this person was looking off into the horizon and it was giving us an a feeling or it was giving me a feeling of someone is trying to plan something. Someone's trying to map something out. Here we have this side of the two of wands where the individual, wow. Okay, what I was going to say is the individual is holding that wand and has the orb in his hand in the other hand, but you, but I thought you couldn't see the second wand. You barely can see it though. See, it's right there. Okay, so what this is saying to me is this person absolutely has chosen what direction they want to move in. Right now, the planning phase is about how to move forward how to go on that direction okay there is still kind of a dreamy energy though that has come out with the nine of cups so whatever it is whatever it is that you're planning whatever it is that you you've chosen whatever leap of faith you're looking to take here it's going to be successful period wish fulfillment is involved here with this nine of cups all right don't worry about the burdens like i'm <laughs> I'm literally seeing with this 10 of wands and this probably, maybe this is just figurative and it makes sense that it would be figurative because what I'm seeing is extremely burdensome, but I'm literally seeing the process of planning a marriage here with this 10 of wands energy and all of the shit that that entails, the, 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 the invitations, the dress, the, the location, the, 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 the decorations, the cake, the, the the um the menu like the food the 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 the, the, the liquor the wine the, the all of that stuff all of the things that come with planning a marriage now maybe you are in an energy of planning a marriage who knows i don't know i'm just saying like literally what i saw with the ten of wands was the process of planning a marriage and that's the type of overwhelm that i'm getting here again it's not a bad thing obviously i mean sure planning a marriage can be stressful but dude you're getting fucking married like that's amazing that i mean if you're if 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 you're really like happy about this then 
more power to you, baby. Like, that's fantastic. But hell yeah, it's fucking burdensome. <laughs> like, there's a lot that comes with that. So take just take it. Maybe you are in an energy of trying to plan a marriage. Because I do, again, I do. we do have this ace of pentacles here. So this could be a commitment, right? Could be that offering. It could be someone, you know, giving a ring to somebody, whatnot, whatever. But um, so, but if you're not planning a marriage, then you're planning maybe this is a business situation. And yeah, if you're trying to get a business off the ground, then yeah, that's burdensome. Like that, there is a lot, there is a lot involved with that. But anyway, this is a good thing that I'm getting. And there's a lot that's involved, but it's good. It's very, very good. Okay. Alrighty, kids. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get some clarification going. And really, the only thing I want to clarify are these two things. I want to clarify the emperor, the, the energies of the emperor here. Just to, I am, yes, okay, fine. I'll admit it. I'm being nosy. I am being a little bit nosy. I want to know what's going on with this emperor. But also, I want to see... I want to see what you are, if this is you, if you are this energy, if you are this emperor energy, I want to see what's going on with you and maybe get you some advice um, on what, on your energy here. And I'm, I'm hearing pitfall. If maybe there could be some pitfalls that you might be fall subject to. We do have the devil on the bottom of the deck starting out. Um, fear. But yeah, that's actually speaking to maybe some of the pitfalls um, that you might experience. Just I, I just want to get you some advice if you're this emperor energy. Okay, so give this three shuffles. That was one. Some advice for this emperor energy. And this is three. Um, so this is masculine energy. This is either your divine masculine or you as the divine masculine. If we're talking twin flames, counterparts, soulmates, whatnot, whatever. And I am saying that because we have the ace of cups here. All right. So love has come out. <laughs> so whatever. Okay, fine. Or this is the masculine energy within you. Oh shit. And then look at the bottom of the deck is the freaking lovers. Good God. All right. <laughs> okay. So this could be a divine masculine counterpart. Okay, fine. But let's get some, let's get some advice for this masculine energy here for you. What's going on with you, Emperor? What can we, how we, how may we serve you, my dear Emperor? Woo! Oh, the chariot. Oh, shut up. Okay, fine. <laughs> with the Empress. Oh, God. All right, guys. So we are officially talking about twin flames, soulmates, divine counterparts. Because we have, in fact, the Emperor and the Empress. Let that marinate for a second. Oh, isn't that just sweet and delicious? <laughs> Can we just talk about, like, I'm just, I'm going to go ahead and pat myself on the back right now. Because in the past, man, I would be so resistant to this energy. But I have totally changed. I've totally changed that. <sighs> okay, anyway, um... So yes, the masculine is moving towards the empress because we have the chariot here with the lovers, okay? Now, we have, I'm saying that the masculine is moving towards the empress because of the chariot energy. The chariot is movement. The chariot could be travel. Um, I mean, like physical travel, like traveling overseas or traveling across the country or traveling through counties, through states, whatever, down the street, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter what type of travel it is. It literally is travel. And this could just be energetic travel, okay? But I feel like it's deeper than that. I feel like there's some actual, some sort of movement that's trying to manifest. There, uh, the chariot is an energy of being very balanced, very grounded also, knowing exactly what it is that you want, keeping your emotions in check, keeping a balance of masculine and feminine energy within that is basically generating the momentum for you to move you towards a direction of what your heart desires, especially also what your higher self desires. Let's go back to, for a moment, let's go back to the pre-shuffle energies where I was talking about how I was seeing the purple with the green and then also the purple with the red the purple with the red which literally said making something real making something manifest okay bringing it into the physical the purple with the green being a communication between your open balanced healed and centered heart chakra with 
your higher self, the wisdom of the universe, the divine God, source, creator, however you want to describe it, okay? With the chariot here, this very much, in my opinion as a reader, is a depiction of you working in tandem with your higher self to get you going where it is you want to go. I, For a long time, well, I've, I've been a very big fan of Esther Hicks of, of um, uh, oh gosh, Abraham, Abraham Hicks, who is ex Esther Hicks, who, tra who um, channels a collective consciousness known as Abraham. Many of you know of this already, like this is no stranger. A lot of you that have been following me here, you are a few followers of Abraham, but also you've heard me talk about this in the past and you've heard me say this in the past. But there was one moment where Esther or Abraham was describing how Esther started really figuring out or started to understand how manifestation with your higher self works. And she started to, she started to see it as um, herself in her physical body being the pointer saying, okay, higher self or okay universe, I wanna go here. And the universe or your higher self saying, boom, you got it, right? So that's kind of what I see here with the chariot. This individual in the physical chariot being drawn by this, these two sphinxes here, this physical individual is you in your physical three-dimensional manifestation saying, okay, we're going this way. And so with the balance of, the balance and harmony, excuse me, of the masculine and the feminine with the two sphinxes here or the light and the dark, the good and the bad, your emotions, whatnot, whatever, this, these sphinxes plus this physical cart here, that is the, chariot or that is your higher self taking you to wherever it, wherever it is you want to go so with that said masculine or emperor you are balanced you are harmonious you have come into a sense of inner union inner peace inner tranquility and that is allowing you to move forward towards your divine feminine your counterpart the lovers the uh, the empress with the Empress being on the bottom of the deck, the Empress is the focus for you right now. The feminine, the, the divine feminine is in fact the focus for you right now. Okay. You've got your sight set on her. You're not letting her out of your sight. Love is in the picture. Love is in your eyes. You are ready to do this. You're ready to make things happen. You're ready to make this grow now. Let's get out of the twin flame dynamic and let's move into other areas of the situation because this really could be about finances and career as well, especially with this ace of pentacles here, okay? Um, so this is you having made a choice with this lover's energy here. And I do feel like some of you might really be in the process of going into business for yourselves, okay? You had to make that choice though. It was a choice of either vice or virtue, all right? Vice being staying in a business situation that is no longer working for you versus virtue being your heart saying, I wanna do this for business. I wanna, I wanna fulfill myself in this way. I wanna be of service in this way. And now you've got that chariot energy where you're like, all right, I'm ready. Let's do this. Let's do this shit. And with the, with the empress here at the bottom of the deck, this is the environment from which your manifestations, from which what it is you are looking to create or move towards, this is the environment in which this is going to grow. The empress is, I mean, this really is a perfect, a perfect um, combination. This is literally the mother and the father. This is the masculine and the feminine. This is the masculine basically impregnating the feminine and the feminine being that vessel from which the whatever is conceived can grow and develop. You see how that works perfectly in tandem with each other? And so are you seeing how that's creating an, an ideal situation for whatever it is you're looking to get off the ground here? Ten of Wands, Ace of Pentacles. You have the ideal circumstance for that to grow and flourish, okay? This is so great. This is really so great. We're going to go to... I kind of feel like we need to talk about this instead, the two of pentacles and the ace of wands, I'm sorry, the ace of cups, because what we know what this is, this is you having your sights set on whatever it is you're looking to do. And this is basically just reassurance saying whatever it is you're, you've decided to move forward towards, it's going to be successful. Okay. Wishes are going to be fulfilled here for sure. All right. So what I really want to do is I want to talk about this 
two of pentacles and the ace of cups. There is a dog and pony show that's still going on here and I'm gonna reshuffle. So I'm gonna shuffle three times. I wanna get you some advice here. Uh, two of pentacles, ace of cups. There's some sort of keeping up of appearance right now. I feel like that's because someone is still trying to decide, is still trying to plan how to, ooh, I did, the wheel of fortune just caught my eye. Okay, divine timing, yes, okay. So there's going to be a period of keeping up some sort of eh, charade, okay? Um, yeah, nine of pentacles is at the bottom of the deck now. Um, just for the time being, just until the moment is right, okay? Okay, but the Nine of Pentacles is on the bottom of the deck right now, which is saying that you're still in this place of autonomy and sovereignty. You're still looking to move in an independent direction. But right now, there's still a little bit of energy of just keeping up with the status quo, just keeping up with whatever has been just for the moment. Okay, what other advice do we have here? Ooh, that's a lot okay overall yep there it is again you guys and i just saw 444 on the counter but this is right here the wheel of fortune this is what caught my eye um this is the divine timing okay timing is a thing here you're just waiting for the right moment to strike you have the the magician the seven of pentacles the hermit oh my god the page of wands and the two of wands all right, so um, we could be talking Virgo energy here. Uh, ah, there's the Hierophant again. Okay, the Hierophant is underneath the Wheel of Fortune. And again, that's speaking to commitment here. However, you have the Magician, the Seven of Pentacles, and the Hermit. All right, so we could be talking a Virgo, but it doesn't have to be. All right, what this is really saying here is someone is in the process of manifesting something brand new for themselves because they've learned from the contrast. Okay, so you have manifesting something brand new for yourself in the driver's seat, the magician. You've learned from the contrast with the seven of pentacles. You've taken stock. You looked back on the past. You're like, okay, what worked? What didn't work? What serves me? What doesn't serve me? And what do I want in the move, moving forward in the future? Excellent. And you've made a decision based on your inner truth, based on your inner sense of authenticity, okay? This hermit energy is, was, is what is giving rise to the nine of pentacles that was on the bottom of the deck before I started doing this pull right here. And didn't the nine of, yes, the nine of pentacles did come out in the pre-shuffle. Okay, so it's from this place of hermit energy, from this place of going within, finding your own inner light, finding out what is really true for you, okay, and letting that shine, bringing that forward, which is then giving you a sense of independence and autonomy with that nine of pentacles energy, all right? And then you have the page of wands with the two of wands. Again, here's that two of wands energy of making a decision and this could be with the page of wands making a decision in how to send a message making a decision in how to communicate something because the page of wands is very much about communication okay um i also see i'm glad these two have come out here because i want i've i've been seeing this for a while so and i've been saying it but i want to i want to show it to you physically i do see the page of wands as a minor arcana version of the hermit because you see how the page here is kind of like sizing up that that wand here it's like he's so in some interpretations this could be seen as he's getting to know himself again this could be a process of integrating or bringing forward what you have learned internally with this hermit energy here and now bringing it to fruition bringing it to the surface which could mean or look like you reinventing yourself um changing your stance on something re-identifying in some way but I think the strongest message here with this page of wands energy is sending a message, especially with the two of wands here. It's like, okay, how, how do I send this message to this person? Or how do I, how do I send this message to these people or whatnot, whatever wheel of fortune is a change in karma. This is good fortune. I feel, I really feel like coming through what I'm feeling with this wheel of fortune energy here is almost as if it's inevitable like you are destined to receive some sort of really good karmic payout for whomever is really resonating with this. And if you're this masculine energy here, 
Okay, if you're the divine masculine here that's looking to, for an opportunity or for a reason or is looking for some sort of reassurance that you're not going to get rejected, that you are going to be received well, first of all, you have this nine of cups here, which is saying that things are going to go well. Okay, but also, also what the wheel, the energy that I'm getting from the wheel of fortune is that you, you're, I'm hearing your sights are set in the right direction. You are moving forward in the right direction. You are going to receive some really good karma. Okay, so if you're looking to reach out to your Divine Feminine and you two haven't really spoken in a while, things were really shitty between the two of you in the past, I really do feel like the two of you have really done a lot of work on yourselves internally. You've healed a lot. You've come to a lot of understandings about yourself and what it is you truly desire out of life. And there's no need to worry because you're both in alignment with this, okay? Now, don't get me wrong, there may be some things that you two are going to have to communicate about. There may be, you know, you, you might want to have to, you might want to, you know, lay down, I don't know, the rules of your engagement. I don't even want to say that, but at the same time, there might be some things you need to discuss, but it, I, it's nothing, it's, there's, I don't, I'm not seeing rejection. I'm not seeing rejection here. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't see rejection anywhere here, okay? Alrighty, kids. With that said, we are at the 45 minute mark, so I'm just going to go ahead and get straight to our oracle guidance. Yeah. We're going to get, ooh, we're going to pull from the crystal mandala. Don't take that one. I do want to see what it is, though. Oh, shit. Okay, guys. Well, we have, <laughs> we have our oracle card already. Um, you know what? I'm going to take this one, but I'm going to pull another. So we're going to get two Oracle cards today because this one, this one just kind of fell out as I was opening the deck and I'm hearing, don't take that one. But I think that's a negative interference. That's trying to get into the situation because the, the card is card number 15, Archangel Raphael and Malachite grace for the grand gesture. And we were literally just, we've been talking about that. There's some sort of leap of faith that someone is looking to take here. Okay. So. I'm going to take that card. I'm, yeah, I'm definitely keeping it. I'm going to read it, but I'm going to get us one more. Okay. Okay, here we go. So, next, just one more piece of Oracle Guidance, please, Spirit. For Tuesday, no, not Tuesday, Thursday... January 2nd. There we go. Okay, and this one is, ooh, card number 13, Archangel Adnasha, Adnashiel and Tiger's Eye. Tiger Spirit Rises. And it's a card number 13. So 13 is the number of death. Um, also, change and transformation. Okay, we're going to start with card number 13. Tiger spirit rises. Mm, come on. Come on, you. Come on, you. You gonna focus? Are you gonna? Are you gonna? Are you gonna? No, you're not. You're, you're fine. 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 <laughs> we bring you the gift of the tiger spirit rising. You are being empowered with a truth more potent than fear. Your spirit is rapidly expanding beyond what opinion and logic can contain. It needs to be free to run wild with divine grace in the world. Your life, your destiny, your divine fulfillment requires that you have the courage to roar for love, to refuse to be put down, to respect yourself, and to let your untamed loving heart be free. Your spirit creates a field of divine electricity through your body and mind that can liberate others from conformity and social conditioning, allowing them to break away from systems based in control and fear. As your tiger spirit rises, you excite and empower the tiger spirit in others to rise above conditioning as they discover the wild divine spirit being they are in truth. That is a beautiful message. And I do want to point out that I keep seeing 444. I've been seeing it a lot lately. I saw it a number of times throughout the reading here. But both of the cards that we got today for our oracle guidance are crystal angels number 444 look at the bottom right of the card there if it would just focus there it is you see both of those cards say 444 i've been seeing 444 a lot lately um so i really and i just saw it again as i was as i was saying this so i really wanted to 
point that out for you guys. Okay, finally, we have card number 15, Grace for the Grand Gesture. Come on, there we go, okay. We bring you the gift of grace for the grand gesture. Although there are times when even the smallest act, such as choosing to think a positive thought, is enough to transform your world, there also comes a time for the leap of faith, the grand gesture of unconditional trust that will free you from the past and empower the universe to gift you with a new future. The grand gesture is the big step, the willingness to say to the universe, I trust you and I know it is time for life as I have known it to give way for a bigger, bolder experience and I am willing to allow, ooh, I'm willing to allow you to lead me into it. You then make an offering which confirms your declaration and empowers the universe to reward the faith you have demonstrated. The grand gesture cannot be forced. If it comes from a place of quote, should or uncertainty, then you are not ready. The grand gesture must be unconditional. It must be something you offer, not for what you can get in return, although the rewards will be rich, but because you are willing to offer something of yourself in service to love. When it comes from this place, the grand gesture is a trigger for divine grace to express itself in your life in an entirely new way, surpassing all expectations and showering you with blessings. Beautiful. All right. Don't rush into this, guys. Five, five, five. Jeez. <laughs> Whatever it is you're looking to do, I just heard, just don't rush into it. Okay. There's no reason to rush into it. Everything's going to be fine. Everything is going to work out in divine timing. All right. Okay, kids. <laughs> So there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah. Bye. Hee <laughs> hee.